Welcome. Really happy to have Brad Wilson, candidate for U.S. Senate and former Speaker of the House here at 47G with us. Brad, thanks for coming in. It's my pleasure, Aaron. Thanks for the invite. It's uh, really great to be part of this. You know, a year ago, maybe 15 months ago, yeah. I walked into your office. You were Speaker of the House. Then I said, look, aerospace and defense is critical. 20% of our state's economic activity. You're a Northern Utah guy. I think there's something here. We need an organization that can convene, promote, and advocate for this industry. And you helped make all of this a reality. So thank you for that. Well, uh, you're welcome. But the truth is, uh, you were the one that started the conversation. And it was one of those things I actually remember uh, thinking, why has this not already happened uh, in the state of Utah? Yeah. You know, I grew up. Uh, in the shadow of Hill Air Force Base. And uh, it seemed like when I was growing up, everyone I knew uh, was attached to this industry, uh, directly or indirectly. And uh, our state has flourished because of it. Our country has benefited from it in so many ways. And so, uh, and having you, quite frankly, uh, being willing to step up and lead the charge that. was uh, all I needed. And uh, we were on board. Well, I really appreciate that. Let's talk about Northern Utah a little bit. Okay. Um, you've declared your candidacy for the U.S. Senate, which uh, congratulations, by the way. Thank you. That's uh, excited for the journey that your family's on and for the, for the next chapters of your lives. I, I'm, I'm curious to know a little bit more about the man and not the candidate, though. Where did you grow up? Um, tell us about high school a little bit, how you met your wife. And then, um, you know, from there, maybe the early beginnings of your career. Okay. Well, I'll try to keep it uh, brief because I hope this is even a little interesting, but uh, I've lived in Utah my whole life and uh, I've loved it here. That's my awesome. wife and I um, are going to be married 30 years um, in February and we have three amazing kids who are all kind of at that part of life where they're launching and uh, our youngest just graduated from high school. And so we're we're really, uh, we feel really blessed, but I did grow up in Layton. Yeah and uh, Kaysville and Layton. And, so you uh, know the sound of jets really well. I, the first house we had, we were under the flight path of those F-16s. Uh -huh. um, and we had a number of people that lived in our neighborhood, uh, including pilots that flew them. Jeez. And um, so, I mean, it really is very much who I am and uh, how I grew up. And, uh, you know, love that sound. And uh, even our business, the, the business that we operated for about the last 20 years, um, you know, officed in that area. And we would hear the F-16s and then the much louder F-35s uh, flying overhead. But yep. uh, it's just a great sound for Utah. Well, really loud. And you hear that. In fact, I was golfing Hill Air Force Base with, um, with, a, with a few partners probably two months ago. The F-35s were doing takeoff and landings there. I think it's the 14th hole. But I'm watching the ball on the tee just shake as they take <laughs> off. And it, it was awesome. Incredible yeah. technology. Yeah, that's right. Well, the ball was probably shaking because I knew it was going to be hit really long and far. And straight. Yeah, that's, that's right. So, that, that's yeah, right. that's right. Yeah, but, um, and, you know, I uh, uh, maybe just a couple other things, Jess. So I spent most of my career in the finance industry okay. um, or in construction and a home building business and uh, have loved that and love being an entrepreneur and running a business. Uh, it's, it's a great experience. Um, and uh, our state has benefited uh, a lot from the industry that you help lead and uh, including, you know, people that build homes. So we're grateful for it. Well, let's, let's kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, we have the number one economy in America. You were speaker of the house. How long? Uh, I was speaker of the house Five years. Five years. Uh, and uh, served in the legislature for 13. So the work you did, 13 years, I mean, you helped ring in an era where we had unprecedented growth. We put in new measures, new policies to help us manage water consumption. Tell us a little bit about some of the highlights that you had, both as speaker, but just yeah. as, as in the House. Yeah. Well... I think that uh, everyone that's listening to this or watching this knows it, but we are incredibly fortunate uh, to live in this state um, for so many wow. different reasons. And uh, people love it here. The secret is out, but uh, you know, having a place like Utah where we believe in low taxes and small government, where business can thrive, where free enterprise is still the way we believe 
business should operate, where we believe in strong families and strong schools and personal yeah. responsibility. And those are all things that as a lawmaker and as Speaker of the House, I worked really hard to ensure uh, got stronger, not even stayed that way, but we got stronger as a state. And, and it makes us an outlier more and more, unfortunately, in this country. But it's why you see all the things that are happening here uh, are, that are so great. And uh, whether it's that we've got the best economic outlook as a state, uh, whether we're the best managed state, whether it's the best state for business, fastest growing economy, all of those things are because we know the right role of government and, and how to support uh, free enterprise. So, uh, but as, as speaker, yeah, I mean, you cover the gamut uh, yeah, and we, we're grateful for a lot of things that uh, uh, we were able to do while I was speaker. I mean, just to name a few, uh, record investments in water uh, to keep our future uh, in terms of growth so our kids can yeah. live here, uh, water conservation. I mean, that's an example. Biggest tax cuts in the history of the state over the last few years. And yeah. that matters because that's money that Utah families can keep in their pockets and spend how they want instead of having lawmakers on Capitol yeah, Hill choose absolutely. how to spend. But it's also money that businesses can reinvest back into their business so they can grow and create more jobs. Um, and you know, the list just goes on and on really, yeah. but uh, we, we have a, a citizen legislature here. It's one of the true last citizen legislatures in the country yeah. where part-time lawmakers go, they do their business for a while, and then they go back home and live with the consequences. There's wisdom in that, isn't there? Yeah, and it makes a difference here. You look at these other states around the country who are struggling, There's in some ways, a direct correlation between having full-time legislatures oh, yeah. and and problems yeah. and growing government. Yeah. You've had a great career. You've grown this successful business. You, you sold it uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, you, you finished up as Speaker of the House. Why the U.S. Senate? Why now? Yeah. Well, it actually relates a little bit to what you said, but you're right. I mean, we've, we've been yeah. very blessed and... Um, feel like uh, part of our responsibility and has been for a while and my wife Jenny and I is to contribute back to our community and one of the ways we've chosen to do that is is public service and, and elected office um, and I've had a front row seat to how important it is that we have a federal delegation that is committed to Utah uh, committed to understanding the issues here and uh, working to represent our state back in Washington and I uh, I think I'm uniquely qualified as a fresh voice, someone that hasn't been in D.C., uh, that understands this state uh, as well, if not better than almost anyone. As Speaker of the House, Aaron, you've got this really interesting job where there's 74 other people every day that are calling you and texting you and telling you what's going on in their neighborhood. I want to take that and that knowledge and that passion and that love for every corner of our state and go back to D.C. and fight for it. And also, you know, the other thing that I think sort of put me over the top in terms of this decision was, uh, is I started talking with people in the spring about it. You know what I heard over and over and over again was people are really, I mean, there's always things we can do better, but people are really grateful for Utah and how things are run here. Yeah. And they're like, Brad, could you just do one thing? Go make DC look a lot more like Utah. Absolutely. So that's why we're running. Oh, I agree with that. So you, you have this unique opportunity, but Washington, D.C. is a mess. It's a total mess. <laughs> You're being generous, actually. Wow. <laughs> I, and I think all of us downstream feel the effects of that. Um, they just passed the National Defense Authorization Act, which provides, well, I think it was $886 billion to fund the military. And we do a lot with that money. For You know, we... Since 2018, it was the first time since our military men and women received a pay raise. And so that, that money goes to important areas um, that, that impact our economy. What, what are you going to do different that we're not seeing now? I mean, sure. how does one man affect the, the mess there? Yeah, yeah. And how are you going to help our, our defense? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that our country is facing a moment in time, and we yeah. will be for a while, where we're spending more on interest on the national debt than the entire defense budget uh, for our country. And that, uh, that needs to be fixed. Um, yeah. And the, the first thing 
uh, that uh, we've got to do to get our country back on track is get spending under control. It's manifesting itself and creating havoc and chaos for Utahns and our country in ways that's almost unimaginable. Yeah. You know, I do think I'm uniquely qualified um, yeah. to do that. The reason we were able to cut taxes a billion dollars here was we restrained spending. Instead of spending new money as it came in, we said, let's give it back to the taxpayers. There's always a reason to grow a program, but there are no hard decisions that are being made in D.C. And so being able to go back with the experience I have and help get that under control, uh, I think will do a lot for our country and of course for our state. But I mean, it goes on and on. I was with a company yesterday in Logan, uh, in your industry, probably one of your members. And uh, they were telling me how the lack of getting anything done in Washington, DC, in particular in confirming cabinet members or uh, individuals that lead part of the federal government has dramatically slowed down their business and their ability to get their work done uh, and yeah. to deploy their technology. Yeah. And this is technology that would create more Utah jobs, but it would also be technology that could really help our whole country, including the defense of our country. Mm -hmm. So, the, I mean, we can't even do the basics in Washington, D.C. right now. Um, we've got to get some people back there that have worked in government that knows how to function, yeah. has experience that's relevant, and can go back and lead by example. Do we continue funding Ukraine? So, Ukraine's an interesting question, yeah. and uh, I'm glad you asked that. You know, there are lessons that our country has learned over the last century, or hopefully learned, uh, maybe even a century ago. And uh, we have arguably one of our greatest uh, political foes uh, that's an evil man uh, that is marching across or trying to march, march across Eastern Europe. And we've provided support to that. Um, the challenge has been that uh, that support has been lacking in some things. Yeah. Uh, it has been lacking in a, a clearly defined and articulated strategy to the American people. One thing that Americans don't want to be involved in is another endless war. Yeah. Um, so that needs to be fixed. Yeah. A strategy needs to be articulated. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there does need to be uh, accountability uh, for where that money is going. And it needs to go to things that make sense and are a return uh, for the taxpayer of this country. And there does need to be transparency. But if those elements are in place, uh, I think we are making a big mistake if we don't support Ukraine uh, in a measured and a thoughtful way. Because uh, our country uh, will pay a heavy price uh, if we don't do that, I believe. And he becomes emboldened, Putin does, and continues to create chaos uh, Across Europe. So, and I know there are people that think we should never send them another dime. Uh, I'm not supportive of sending them any more money unless we do some things differently. But we're the United States of America. We can do some things differently. We can rise to the occasion and support those people of Ukraine and also stop one of our biggest uh, political foes and enemies uh, uh, in, at the same time. Yeah, I really like that. Do you feel like the state of Utah has benefited from the conflict with Ukraine at all? Well, what's interesting about all the money that we're talking about spending on Ukraine um, is that a good portion of that money is actually spent in the United States. A uh, hundred, roughly, maybe a little less, a hundred million dollars so far uh, of, of those dollars have actually been spent in Utah with Utah companies shipping over uh, items for the Department of Defense, military items, uh, to Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it does, I mean, you would never want to have a war to create economic stimulus, mm -hmm. but it actually has stimulated the Utah economy uh, with some of that investment. It's not the reason to do it, but we do know that that is one of the outcomes from it. Yeah. So as you look at, oh, maybe the next three to five years, we've got an election underway, which I think will determine a lot for our mm -hmm. country in the near term. It always does. By the way, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> Biden, Trump. Yeah, 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 we, yeah. It's an interesting lineup right now. Yeah, well, it is. And, uh, you know, the way that I think we're all reading it is those will be the two nominees. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and we'll get a chance to relitigate uh, who gets elected to the White House. I suspect Donald Trump's going to win. 
actually next fall. That's what I would, I would say. And, and, you know, the policies that he put in place when he was president, the things he did specifically for Utah, mm -hmm. we benefited from here. Um, and so uh, the tax cuts, uh, great for our economy, great for Utah families. Yeah. And so from a policy standpoint, uh, fully supportive of the things that he did, he did and I think he will do uh, if elected president. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to watch the national narrative and dialogue take place right now. I think we're all waiting in anticipation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, and the other thing that people keep forgetting, and unfortunately, I think members of Congress have forgotten to some extent, but uh, there are three branches of government. And uh, the president can't just unilaterally do things and sh or shouldn't be able to do things uh, without the consent and approval of Congress yeah. and, and vice versa. Yep. And and so our country, I mean, regardless of how people feel about this next cycle we're in, uh, we're going to be fine. Uh, this is this is the most amazing country ever, and uh, we we have a great system that will ensure that we're we're stronger and stronger. Absolutely. One more question before we wrap up. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of innovation taking place. We're we're in competition with China. Absolutely. We're um, at a very unique point, and I think, in our history right now. We get to determine it, as a country who we want to be and what we want to do mm -hmm. for the next century. Mm -hmm. And I think those are the right questions. I don't think we have a strategy. Mm -hmm. um, it was easy coming out of World War II to say we want to be um, the moral leader of the, of, of the world. We want to stand for freedom. We want to help rebuild other people's countries through steel production and manufacturing. We saw a lot of great things happen. It was an ec economic stimulus from the, you know, the, from the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. What do you feel like the opportunities are for our country in the next decade or two? What should we be focused on? And that could be a technology question. That could be a political question. Yeah. But as you're, as you're putting your executive hat on, you're saying, hey, we're going a direction. What direction is that? And where are we going to steer the ship? That's a great question. And, you know, what you just described uh, from my perspective is global leadership. Uh, and that is a role that this country has played. And that is something that this country has benefited from tremendously. Um, and, and I think that, you know, we know there's a lot on the line right now. Yeah. Uh, we've got to get our country back on track. And uh, we've got to do a number of things to accomplish that. But, but I, I still believe that our best days are ahead of us. And I say this a lot, but you know, there's this uh, saying that we've heard, it's been around for a long time, uh, that every generation has its own rendezvous with destiny. Hmm. Uh, to rise to the occasion and solve the problems of today and prepare our country for tomorrow. And I think that a new generation of leaders uh, at a state and a federal level uh, need to rise to the occasion and solve the big problems of today. Um, we are, we've had a little bit of a mess handed to us. Uh, yeah. Let's fix it. Yeah. Let's fix it. And, and the whole world will benefit uh, from that. Keeping our country safe um, mm -hmm. with enemies like Russia, North Korea, and China uh, is really critical uh, yeah. for the future of the world. Uh, and the United States of America. And I know uh, that that's part of that rendezvous of destiny that I was talking to you about. Well, I can, I can feel the passion and I'm excited for you. And I wish you and your family best of luck over the coming months. Um, campaigns are a grind. Yeah. You look pretty uh, refreshed. And, <laughs> and so um, yeah. hopefully 2024 goes the way that uh, you, you hope it will. And you know, best of luck, let us know what we can do to help. Well, I appreciate it. We feel very good about Corrado. I just want to say one thing. You know, I really love being Speaker of the House. I think it's the best job in politics in the state of Utah because you get to help uh, make a big difference, but you get to fly under the radar a little bit. But I have loved uh, traveling the state uh, and listening to Utahns. Uh, we have the most amazing people here. It's really actually been a lot of fun. And uh, look That's forward great. to seeing what you guys do and uh, this organization to make a big difference. Thank you. Appreciate it.